Okay, we're on. Uh, hello, everybody. Yeah. Welcome to another uh, live webinar with I Love Homeopathy. And it's, uh, it's a very hot day here in Chennai. And I don't know how it is in your part of the world or wherever you're from. The speaker today is Dr. Mohammad Rafiq. Uh, most of the homeopaths around the world know Dr. Mohammad Rafiq. He's been on the international circuit for many years. He's given uh, speeches, seminars, papers in uh, LMHI, Turkey, all over the world, Malaysia, Sri Lanka. And now he's Not agreed Turkey. to give us a live webinar here on I Love Homeopathy. And uh, the subject that he he's chosen is pros and cons of clinical tips. And I'll now hand over the session to Dr. Mohamed Rafiq. Dr. Mohamed Rafiq. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Uh, thanks to I Love Homeopathy and Karthik for inviting me. And I'm so happy to see all of you uh, together. Uh, so today's topic is the pros and cons of clinical tips. Uh, you know, just uh, can you keep the slides? I hope you will change yeah. the, the slide. OK. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Slide now move on. So you can just uh, look at that image. There is a confused uh, a beginner, a fresh BHM student uh, who has completed the course and he is confused and he's confused between Lacasis, Bryonia, Nexomega, and many other remedies. He is even confused what to do, whether to refer the case or to manage the case. So next. So why this topic? Next slide, please. Slide number two. Yeah. So why this topic? Homeopathy is not exploited fully. That's what I feel. Because we homeopaths make use of that. But unfortunately, many times we have uh, many patients in a terminally ill uh, such, uh, situation, they are not uh, benefited by homeopathy, mainly because we homeopaths don't have entry into the modern medical hospitals that right now we are facing it in everywhere. So what I feel is homeopathy is not exploited fully, mainly, be uh, mainly because of uh, our threats against us. And more than that, there are many other challenges. We are not much skilled in managing such cases. That is another thing. So it is time to exploit homeopathy for more wider range of conditions, diseases, and even for the terminally ill patient. There are homeopathic medicines that will increase, that will improve the ejection fraction of a terminally ill cardiac patient. But unfortunately, we don't get an opportunity, except a few doctors may get, but majority won't, don't get it. So there is the scope of homeopathy is not and beginners are under a confused state. They don't know what to practice, how to practice, when to give medicine, when not to give, when to refer the case, when to uh, refer the case to another system. So total confusion is there because many times they, they learn something from a teacher and they not they don't get to see the way same way he prescribes a remedy to the patient. So many times uh, there are many problems, uh, difficulties faced by uh, beginners. So another thing is there are a wrong concept among our beginners. Like if there is infection, there has to be antibiotics. Even the public are having a confusion. Like if there is infection, there has to be anti uh, antibiotics. If there is viral infection, there has to be antiviral agent. And if there is recurrence of infection, there has to be steroid. That is the common understanding of the public. So it is it, the same concept even homeopaths are having. So that's why they refer the case to uh, modern medical doctors. So this is time that we must change all those wrong concepts with our medicine. So we have our own scope and that we must exploit for the for helping the people. Next slide. So clinical tips is an indication or a hint given to someone in order to manage a difficult case. This is just a help. When someone is singing and asking for help, we just help. That's all. It is not for a lifelong way of practice for all the cases uh, one person is going to get in our day to day practice. That's not. So this is only a one time help. So we must treat that in, in that way rather than considering it as a blind way of prescription. 
this is only a help next so just have a look at the knife a knife has got the positive and negative things so positive thing is we can use the knife to cut the apple cut the vegetables and so many good things we can do but the negative things are we can use the knife to kill someone or hurt somebody so both negatives and positive things a knife is having in the same way our clinical tips has got both positive and negative aspects so how we use that is more important and when to use it and when to not when not to use it that's very important next next slide yeah so what are clinical tips uh, a, an indication on the basis of pqrs or a keynote or it may be a fragment from the materia medica you know many times we remember a remedy by its pqrs and it becomes a clinical tip for example if there is urge to stool, pass stool immediately after eating nexomica comes to our mind that pqrs comes asthma relieved by stool so pothos comes to our mind in the same way uh, it becomes a clinical tip useful for our practice so fragment from materia medica repertory and therapeutic book that often come to our mind when when we are with a patient suddenly the patient says something that immediately the writer from that book will come to our mind and be prescribed that of we have we often experience that and clinical experience of the physician so in boric and all those materia medicas not hanimanian homeo uh, pura not the source books i mean other materia medica books like lm choudhury uh, eb nash and all they have mentioned their own clinical experience along with the materia medica so that often help in uh, our prescription and another is commonly used to remedy of course this has to be considered with little precaution because a commonly used remedy may not be the best remedy so if if there is dengue fever comes immediately petorium comes that should not be better take the case and uh, but as a last resort we can think of using petorium per no doubt in that so even a commonly used remedy can be considered as a last resort next yeah useful the pros of clinical tips we must uh, look at the positives in every person in the same way what are the positives in clinical tips that is very important uh, in acute and emergencies and one sided diseases you know in acute especially in our practice like in a government sector we don't get enough time for a detailed case taking so we need to prescribe uh, uh, within a few minutes so in that case acute cases emergency cases and one sided diseases many times patient will come with some problem and we don't have the details much details there may be only one warts and warts is located at the mucocutaneous junction and there is a bleeding so we can think of a remedy like nitric acid that will give some relief and later on you take the case because we must give some relief to the patient when he comes first once we give the relief he will develop better rapport with the homeopath so we can take the case and then finally we can go into the constitutional of course our final ultimate aim is to treat the individual rather than just managing the acute presenting complaint then next is initial development of practice that is very important when i started my practice i had used clinical tips given by many doctors seniors and all because it was very necessary for my survival so for the survival that is very important because nowadays we see uh, many youngsters shifting their profession you know after bhms they go uh, with clinical results they shift the profession many are going towards medical insurance and all so that should not happen uh, the successful success of homeopathy is not a few doctors become famous it is it has to be universal so even a beginner must get he must get at least 20 cases in a day or at least 10 cases in a day that has to be that must be there otherwise we cannot call it as a profession if one or two doctors become famous that is not the way everybody who uh, whoever comes to this profession whoever joins this course must get minimum practice so survival is very important and to target the presenting complaint which i already told because a presenting complaint is very important a person comes with a problem with that complaint if we don't manage it he will go away so if someone comes with colic better by bending like this forward bending amelioration just give colosin he will be okay next day he will come and tell all his problems his emotional problem family problems and all 
then he can go further and prescribe his constitutional remedy. This is the way to get clients to homeopathy. So use of make use of clinical tips. And when a patient comes with a specific demand, I can give an example. Nowadays, we get many patients who have uh, chronic renal failure and they are under the treatment of nephrologists. So they come and say, doctor, I have my creatinine levels are high. The nephrologist is going to start uh, dialysis. And once they start, they will never leave you. It will be a regular process. So they want something only to reduce the creatinine level so that nephrologist won't do that. This is a specific demand. We cannot say that, sorry, I don't know anything. So why don't you prescribe a specific remedy like picric acid? Acid picric is very useful. In the same way, we have L serum. These are the two remedies. One more is gingiber. These three remedies you can consider, keep in your mind for such cases. And picric acid 6C is a specifically, I have seen in some cases, of course, not all cases, uh, reducing creatinine after uh, giving this remedy, picric acid or acid picric 6C. So such specific demands we must manage. Otherwise, we'll never be treated as a physician. That's very important. And to keep patient with us till we reach the semilimo. I don't think just by one sitting case taking, we can diagnose uh, the constitutional remedy. It's not that easy. I need at least three to four visits so that I, the patient will be in a position to give the symptoms, a better rapport we need to create. So till then we need, we must hold the patient with us. So for that, it is very important to give some relief to the present complaint and giving one or two remedies, one remedy in a lower 30 potency, I don't think it will spoil the case. It will never. Just remedy will act. Once we stop, the action will be or that's all. So then we can later on give another remedy. And when someone else comes for medicine, this happens in our government sector. The father will come and say that my child is having diarrhea, give the remedy. As, yesterday only it happened. A father said that my child is having a diarrhea, give the remedy. Which remedy I must give? Arsenic is there, chamomilla is there, falsatilla is there, sulfur is there, aloes, many remedies. He does not know anything, no peculiarities, nothing, not even a causation at least. No. So I asked, can you bring the child if possible? Oh, he said, okay, let me try. And he brought the child. And uh, the mother said, doctor, whenever he gets coughing or crying, stool comes out. Wow, that's something great for prescribing sulfur. Sulfur has got during coughing or crying, the stool comes out automatically. Uh, that is sulfur. So I have given sulfur. Hope it will work. So many times such prescriptions help in our day-to-day -day practice. And uh, when there is no uh, response from the previous approach, suppose I have started the case with a classical way of prescribing, my own way of uh, any particular way of uh, that comes within the domain of homeopathy. I feel all the methods, all tolerable methods in homeopathy are different feathers of the crown of homeopathy. So every, all methods we must make use of in our day-to-day -day practice. All these methods are different weapons we have that can be tried one after the other and that may help the patient. So many people say that in homeopathy there are methods. No, I feel it is a blessing because we have more wider scope. We have more weapons as per the case we can select. So. Uh, so when uh, when such cases come, better take the case directly. But in government sector, many times it is not possible. So we have to prescribe the climatic remedy or guessing remedy. We say because when this in this climate, when someone gets uh, fever during a hot climate, so bryonia we consider or some other remedy as per the climatic remedy. Uh, I think majority of the you may not agree with that, but. No other way. When there is wet weather, we think of remedies like Restox, Arania, Diadema, or uh, Dalcamera. So no other way when we don't have the details. So we just give the remedy and ask them to come. If uh, no proper relief, then come back with the child. That's what we say nowadays. Next. Next. Yeah. Homeopathy is a holistic system. So the cons of clinical tips, negatives. Homeopathy is a holistic system and clinical chip is a shortcut, not applicable to all the cases. So yes, it's, it is true. Clinical tip is something, a blind tip. So it may not be, it may not cover the totality. And routinism is strongly condemned by masters like Hanneman. So we should never be a routine prescriber. Homeopathy is 
became a medical system uh, because of all these characteristic peculiarities like individualistic and uh, holistic concept. So we should never be a, a, a routine prescri prescriber. And each case is a new case. So we must treat each uh, patient from a different angle. We must look at each case because all uh, cases may not be the same. So it depends upon the case. So individualization is very important rather than blindly prescribing. And repeated symptomatic treatment is suppression. That is the main thing. Hanuman has said that don't repeatedly give the uh, partially similar remedies. That will complicate the case. So better give one dose and wait and see whether the case is responding or not. That's very important. Uh, rather than giving same remedy repeatedly for many months or years and uh, that will spoil the case. That's uh, wrong instead of giving uh, one or two doses and wait and watch. And suppression makes the myosome stronger. So we often see those who repeatedly go for symptomatic treatment, they come with more deeper structural problems or functional problems that affects the vital organs. So we have to be very careful while dealing with such cases. And blind use of clinical tip is uh, that will often spoil the case. That is very important. Blindly, if you prescribe anything, that will spoil the case. So as homeopaths, our aim is to target the whole individual. Next. Next slide. So this is the best option. That is judicious and timely use of qualified clinical tips. This is better than using a blind way of prescribing qualified clinical tips. Next. Next slide. Yeah. Qualified clinical tips, which has got causation, location, sensation, modalities, uh, and concomitant. You know, uh, even a common symptom is very important in homeopathy because that common symptom may have some more indication that will help for uh, remedial selection. So when someone say, uh, give a common symptom, don't stop there. You just keep on uh, wait, uh, trying to get more information about that. And he may give some modality or a concomitant. So concomitant many times is a blessing for homeopaths given by Hanneman has mentioned it and uh, Boningosen made it uh, in a better way. And later on, uh, Boger has uh, made a book that uh, with more concomitant. So in, in that way, we have uh, uh, many detailed things work on concomitant and it's very useful in practice concomitant compared to other modalities and all. Now, for example, in rheumatism, bryonia is the best. If someone say it is a foolish thing, but if there has to be some bryonia indications like stitching and aggravation by warmth and even slightest motion and better by absolute rest, of course, all may not be there, but one or two prominent indication if it is there. And if there are no contraindication, we can definitely give that remedy. So it becomes a valuable remedy. Otherwise, it may not be the remedy. It may be another remedy like Restrox or Ledum or something like that. Now, in pyrexia, belladonna is the best. If I say like that, that is meaningless. But if there has to be sudden onset and morning with a breath, that is very characteristic, especially when there is fever and the mother will tell that, doctor, when my child gets a fever, he will have a morning like this, ah, 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 like that with the fever, we can think of belladonna. And the congested look and throbbing headache, that all those, everything may not be there still, the mother will say, my child is happy, vivacious, active, happy child. But whenever he is sick, he becomes a violent and horrible and naughty. So we can think of, a uh, sorry, belladonna. Next. So practical option is first assess the type of case and select the approach. So when a case comes, many times beginners do this mistake. When an acute case comes, they directly jump into the family history, personal history, and all these things combined together. Kent has very clearly said, never treat acute and uh, chronic aspects together, chronic case together. So we have to differentiate. So first assess the type of case and select the approach. That is very important. And preferably start with the classical approach. That is a better, uh, best approach available. Classical way of prescribing, of course. And if no change, another potency or remedy. This is many times we have, uh, we fail, uh, we, we experience this. Suppose I have given Nexomica to a patient, Nexomica 30, and he comes back and next day he returns and say that, doctor, there is no relief. I don't get any result with the Nexomica 30. 
then we change the remedy. No, we have to look at the same case. Just make sure that if there are indications of nexomica, if such indications you get, you can think of giving higher potency. So we have 30, 200, 1M. So different potencies are different weapons we have. So if the symptoms are same, we can think of giving a uh, higher potency. So many times what's cases when we give 30 to job, no result. So when we directly give 1M, we get the result. In the same way, opposite is also experienced. We give 1M directly, no result. And finally, we give 30 and we get the result. So it depends. So the practical option is give the remedy, same remedy in higher potency that will be, uh, that will, that may work better. And still not, uh, no change, then consider any other method within homeopathy. I have already told there are many methods with, within homeopathy that can be considered for managing the case. And even you can use the clinical tips that can help the case. And the second opinion, that is another option or team approach. Many homeopaths have this arrangement. They have a team of doctors together, all, all of them take the case and patient will get uh, opportunity to tell in a detailed way. And uh, many times doctors are allowed to ask more questions. So one or two doctors who may uh, have a different experience, different uh, view, viewpoint that may give, they may, they can give uh, different uh, insight into that and that will help for prescription. So second opinion or team approach is very valid. And even after that, if there is no result, better refer the case to another center. That's a better option. Rather than just asking the patient to go, we, we can refer the patient with a reference letter with all that already, whatever the investigations details we have done, that can be included. So it becomes a valid document so that next physician may not blame the previous doctor. If we ask blindly ask the patient, you just go, that will create problems. So this is the best way, refer the patient. Next, because we must know our limitations. Yeah, a lesson from the history. Many stalwarts had suggested clinical tips. Of course, as per the case, as per the situation. So Hahnemann had suggested hepar, nitric acid, tuja, sulfur, etc. Of course, not as a specific, but for certain type of miasmatic conditions, he had mentioned it. He, Hahnemann had uh, suggested tuja tincture externally in difficult ward cases. This is very important. Many homeopaths give tuja for all the ward cases. That is a mistake. What he said was use only when there is no result, no response from the other approach. Then only you use it. But unfortunately, many people are using uh, tuja ointment for all the Watts cases. That is a mistake. And Hahnemann used bryonia juice in some cases. The mother tinja, the extract of bryonia rather than giving the potency. And it is very interesting that even after introducing the LM potency, he had given centesimal potency in a few cases. So. The case on let the case only uh, desire the approach. Let the case only desire the remedy and the potency and reputation. That's very important. And Hahnemann had cured typhus cases, 183 typhus cases having different symptoms using Rustox and Bryonia in alternation. That is alternating action. So it does not mean that we all can use two or three remedies together. He had used only in that particular situation for that case. And in Paris case diary, he started many cases with sulfur. So at that time, the sorry cases were prominent. Now we have multi complicated cases along with the medicinal diseases. So it may not be applicable in all cases, but we can consider it when there is nothing to prescribe. We can think of giving sulfur or many doctors give no sorts to make the case clear. And this is very important when there is nothing, nothing to prescribe you get a history of infection so we can start the case with a no sort so next time when the patient comes we get better clarity next so hanneman says i recommend arnica montana as preventive and curative for boils hanneman so i don't mean or even hanneman never had an intention to say that all boils can be managed by arnica but he has said when other indications are not giving any response you can think of arnica and believe me, I have many times got a uh, good result with Arnica in recurrent boils. Or boils come one after the other. It becomes a tendency. So we can think of, especially symmetrical lesions come, we can think of Arnica. And recurrent boils, parenchyals come one after the other, we can think of. Even Arnica is indicated for tendency to repeated accidents. 
repeated accidents come one after the other. So we can think of higher potency of arnica. Next. So it's a case cured by Hanneman using Bryonia juice from R.P. Patel's uh, collection of books. I got it. Next. Next. Yeah. So the most important fact is all homeopaths have used clinical tips on different situation, difficult situations during the initial days of practice. So initial days, we all started with boric. Once we are established, we have our own way of practice. So uh, everything is good, provided we must give the freedom to beginners to start with the boric. That is a better option. And gradually, they will come to the classical way of prescribing. Of course, we should never entertain the students to start with other systems. We should never entertain the students to start with patents. That is all bad things. But at least give some, make use of some clinic tips and gather some patients. Once they are established, they have the freedom and they have the confidence to manage cases uh, with a classical approach. Next. So some successful, some useful clinical tips I would like to share and make uh, please note one thing that use only when no result with the indicated remedy. That's very important. I don't want to say that these remedies I'm going to cover are not the specific only remedy, but these are just an option if you don't get result with the previous approach. Next. So mind and refraction. We'll start from uh, mind to the um, general medicine, psychiatry, like that. Uh, chapter wise, we'll go. So under mind. Uh, cramps in all levels, including mind. It is cuprum met. Here, the cramps affects the muscles. You know, cuprum has got the cramps. And even in the mind, this cramp is there. That compressed feeling, that tight feeling, that compressed suffocated feeling is also there in cuprum. In the mind as well as the muscular level. So physical level and mental level. Of course, cactus is also having that sensation. But cuprum is more uh, cramps in mind. Uh, in all levels, including mind. It is cuprum met, so please keep in the mind. Now, next is stiffness of mind as well as joint. You know, Restox has got the stiffness of joint, and gradually, the moment, once the moment starts, it becomes easy. In the same way, the mind of Restox is fixed, almost like Tuja. It is fixed mind. Restox has got the psychotic background. He won't be able to change his mind once the decision is taken, even when someone falls. So gradually, gradually, he will change. So that restocks stiffness of mind as well as the joint, stiffness of the joint. That is restocks. Please keep in that mind. Now, emotionally dry with dry membrane. You know, bryonia is also called as dryonia. There is dryness everywhere. Dryness in the joint, dryness in the GIT, dryness in between uh, the pleura, pleural membrane. So serous membranes. Everywhere dryness is there in bryonia. So emotionally also there is dryness. Because Bryonia is bothered about own business. He is not bothered about others, neighbors and all, family and all. He is only bothered about Bryonia, uh, sorry, own business. So there is emotional dryness. He won't help others. He will never help like uh, causticum, phosphorus and all. So that dryness in the mind is there and dryness in the body membrane is also there. Next. Yeah, the, our mind and bowels are closely related. There is no desire in opium. We all know when opium patient is on the bed and when we ask them anything and he won't respond, he will say, I'm okay, I'm okay. Just like Harnika and Helaborus. So opium has got no desires and no want. Even though there may not be stuporous condition, but he will be like a stuporous person, no response, at all, no need at all. In the same way, the constipation with no urge you can think of opium. Constipation with urge is naxomica, we all know. But constipation without urge is opium. You know, the mother will come and tell that, doctor, my child has got constipation. And the problem is he's or uh, she is not bothered about passing. We have to forcefully take them to the washroom because they don't want to pause at all. For four to five days, they won't be. They, they are free. So that is opium. You can think of opium in such cases. Now, shyness of uh, shyness, we have many remedies like barretas and all. Shyness is characteristic of silicia. So, in the same way, the stool of silicia is also shy. In that, 
because the stool will come out and go back. So, so it is almost like it's just a comparison only. Uh, the sinus of the stool is uh, of silesia. So, in the same way, the patient is also having sinus. Now, next is difficult to start a task, then easy. First part of the stool is hard, then loose. This is characteristic of lycopodium. You know, Kent has given uh, an advocate who has got fear to go to the court. Starting trouble is there. But once he starts, he will be able to do very well. So starting is the, always there in lycopodium. And he does not want uh, responsibilities. So lycopodium does not like responsibilities. So in the same way, starting trouble is there due to lack of confidence, even though he has the power to control the whole world. So lycopodium has got the same kind of stool. Starting is very difficult, but once starts a little bit hard, soft, soft, and finally it becomes diarrhea. So lycopodium must be kept in the mind. And especially when you travel, when away from home, constipation is lycopodium is the remedy to be considered first. Of course, nexomica we can think of due to altered diet, but lycopodium has also its own use. Now, changeability of mind is pulsatilla. Everything in pulsatilla is changeable. In the same way, stool characteristic is also changeable in pulsatilla. So these are our comparisons. And unsatisfied with the staff is and urge to do duty. That is nexomica. Nexomica is never happy with subordinates. Even though they do things, everything perfectly, they are not happy. So in the same way, unsatisfaction is seen in nexomica as well. Uh, he will go just pass the stool and come back and go. That tendency, unsatisfied feeling is there in nexomica. Even in anacardium, there is, that is there. But anacardium patient will go to the washroom. He will try, sit, he will get irritated. He will get lost. He will just go out. So that is anacardium. But nexomica can pass, but come back, again go back. And in the same way, we can compare Mercor. Mercor has got frequent urge, but there has to be some blood and burning. So Mercor is also useful for that urge. So many times we use Mercor in ulcerative colitis. And irritable bowel syndrome, we make use of remedies like Nexomica and Alus. Whereas in uh, ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, and Crohn's disease, we make use of Mercor, Mercurius, Prombidium, and one more remedy is there, uh, cyanodone dactylone. That is an Indian remedy we got from Ayurveda. Ayurveda is there. Cyanodone dactylone. That's also a useful remedy for uh, dysentery and all those uh, uh, irritable bowel syndrome. Sorry, not inf irritable, inflammatory bowel diseases. Okay. Next. Okay. Head and vertigo. Alopecia areata, you know, nowadays we get many cases, alopecia areata. It's an autoimmune disease. So, youngsters are affected mainly. So, for that, we have remedies as per the case we can prescribe. If no result, we can think of acid fluor. We can give the potency of acid fluor a few doses and just see. Many times it has helped me in failed cases. When the indicated remedy was not giving any response, we can think of uh, a few doses of acid fluor. Now, for the vertigo, we have many remedies if you look at the uh, repertory. But when vertigo, when turning the head, the conium is the high mark remedy and the most rem uh, useful remedy. And this is repeatedly verified, the usefulness of conium mac. We have other remedies. If you go to repertory, there are 100 remedies. You know, every day, many are adding, including remedies into the repertory. And uh, sorry to say, individuality of the repertory is greatly affected. That's why I prefer still prefer using Patak repertory because that's enough. A limited number of remedies he has mentioned. That too practically applicable remedies. So including more remedies to the repertory will confuse. That is what I feel. Next. Just a case of uh, acid flu 200 was given followed by placebo and there was a good response. Next. This is another case I got a uh, good uh, result and she is 50 plus age 50 plus and her family members everybody may, used to make fun of her they used to call her taklu because no uh, because of this alopecia uh, areata this was small and increased gradually and she became like this for many years she was like this but after giving acid fluor 
she responded very nicely this is the current status still she is under my treatment next yeah uh, we often get indurated styes in our day to day practice a person gets styes and that persists and it becomes a nodule like a large lump that remains for long we can think of staphylococcus if other remedies like sulfur or tuja as per the indication if they don't work you can think of staphylococcus you know staphylococcus is a injury remedy for the injury to the mind that remains in the same way it is also a remedy surgical remedy for surgical uh, after pains after surgery and even injury we can think of staphylococcus so uh, styes indurated styes that persists for long think of staphylococcus another remedy to promote the growth of eyelashes you know this is a big problem falling of hair from the eye and eyelash and that will be chronically like that so it will produce even uh, depression and some of them are, they have to use the artificial uh, eyelashes and all but we can try uh, using uh, petroleum that is the main most useful remedy uh, for to promote the growth of eyelashes next yeah blunt injury to the eye we have mainly ledum arnica and symphytum so many times only arnica is the injury remedy for homeopaths no we have many injury remedies even strontium carb we have many remedies hypericum like that so for the eye ledum arnica and symphytum and ledum was given for this case because when i found he when he was closing the eye there was darkness closing the eyes there was dark Uh, discoloration so i prescribe ledum if there is darkness bluish discoloration we can think of ledum otherwise we can give arnica and symphytum is also a remedy to the blunt injury to the eye it's not only a remedy for the uh, um, bone fracture even symphytum is a remedy for acid peptic disease if you read boric it has written symphytum is useful remedy for acid peptic disease so like that many times homeopaths we have a idea that okay this remedy is for only for this it's not like that even calendula is called as an injury remedy but if you read calendula boric has written even uh, it is a remedy for an intercurrent remedy for cancer so we should never limit a remedy as an acute remedy short acting remedy it is not like that all remedies are potentized so obviously all remedies uh, can act in a deeper economy of the patient it can definitely next so myristica you know myristica along with hepar and silicia of course boric has written that it acts deeper than hepar and silicia of course we we need not blindly follow that but one thing is there myristica is a surgical remedy it is really useful remedy in our day to day practice for any abscess and all it will easily drain i remember my homeopathic friend who had rectal abscess that was huge abscess there was huge collection mri was done and the surgeon said that there is no possibility of natural drainage so surgically it has to be drained so he had told me what to do so i thought it's better just try uh, myristica so myristica i had uh, 6c at that time so prescribed it and believe me friends next day there was discharge of pus and surgery was had to cancel they had to cancel the surgery so myristica always keep in the mind of course we have differentiating features uh, silicia is very chilly but pain is not that much hepar is highly chilly highly painful and highly irritable so like that we can differentiate next we have herpes zoster cases nowadays especially those who have low resistance uh, i remember when in finally we used to get herpes zoster cases first we used to refer for hiv testing because in that area hiv was very common and many of them used to get herpes zoster so herpes zoster ophthalmicus is a very dangerous condition because if we don't manage it properly the victim will have blindness due to corneal ulcer and we will be blamed for that so you can consider this remedy ranunculus bulb 30 as a preventive is this can be given that will keep the cornea intact i have experienced in 3 to 4 cases without referring the case to ophthalmologist because they prescribe ointments only don't they and uh, antiviral agents that's all but even without that i could manage a few cases 
and of course uh, heptazoster we have many medicines like mesarium dalcamera arsenic alb uh, sikelco and of course ranunculus bulb mainly the ranunculus bulb is useful for herpesoster ophthalmicus and uh, herpesoster of the chest that produces post herpetic neuralgia we can think of ranunculus bulb or mesarium next okay, of course anxiety before dental work so when we go to dentistry uh, there are many people who can, uh, we are supposed to refer some cases to dentist because if there are caries no use of prescribing a remedy of course we can give a remedy to control the infection and then pain and all but once that episode is over it is better refer the case to a dentist who can either remove it or to do uh, root canal treatment that is better option of course we must ask the patient to avoid silver amalgam that may because mercury and the silver in the dental filling material can produce so better composite is a better option or they can use the cap after doing the root canal so when a patient when our patient is going for that as family physician we can just consider if they are a little afraid to go to a dentist we can think of either calcarea cap or phosphorus we can just differentiate it now troubles of wisdom teeth it is calcarea fluor you know many uh, people having wisdom teeth problems they will just come and say that i have earache so when we look into the ear there is nothing and ask the patient to open the mouth and you can see impacted uh, wisdom teeth and that is producing so first you try this remedy calcarea fluor if no result uh, if there is caries you can consider creosote or merxol as per the case if no result then you can refer the case to a maxillofacial surgeon who will remove it or a dentist uh, he will remove it so that uh that is a, that will give permanent result that's better option but before referring you can consider calcarea fluor next so leukoplakia you know leukoplakia is a pre cancerous condition so in this case when he came i just had a look and found profuse salivation there is increased the thirst and there was halitosis or bad breath so the moment he opened the mouth i could feel the smell that is mercsol you know in mercsol it is written i do, i don't remember which material america the moment patient opens the mouth the whole room will have the smell so uh, mercsol 200 was given in this case next yeah ear uh, boils inside the ear canal that is picric acid you know in homeopathy we get many ent cases so i always ask the students whenever i take class for the beginners ask them to keep uh, ent set so that we can diagnose the ear problems without the ent set it is not uh, possible to select most uh, diagnose most of the ear problems so boils in the ear canal is very painful because there is no space inside the ear canal we have the bone and the tissue skin that's all no soft tissues for the swelling to accompany the the swelling the, there is no place for the accommodation place for the accommodation so uh, you can consider picric acid it is very painful painful boil in the ear canal you can think of picric acid now another is temporomandibular joint pain maybe right side or left side you just keep the finger like this ask the patient to chew once the patient chew there will be pain so this is temporomandibular joint pain maybe common among those who have the chew tobacco chewing habit or even old age or middle aged people they may have uh, osteoarthritis many even there are chances for infection and all so when you don't get the result with the indicated remedy you can think of angustura remedy uh, angustura vera of course causticum rest of there are a few remedies uh, sanguinaria and all can be considered but most useful is angustura vera if you don't get the result next is an image of uh, a case of boil after picric acid 30 ear canal next you know anosmia is a dangerous condition because if we don't have the sense of smell we may even miss uh, the lpg gas leaking that's very dangerous so anosmia must be treated so we get many anosmia cases there is anosmia 
but patient may have often see smell from the nose that others can easily make out and then you can think of auromet aurum has got the bony destruction too or there may be some infection that is little deeper so abscess may be there or the swelling will be horrible in auromet so anosmia with offensiveness offensive smell from the nose you can think of auromet of course we have many remedies like auromet allium sepa sticta sanguinaria canadensis sanguinaria nitrica not canadensis please not sanguinaria nitricum arnica and silicia you know in every remedy there are different pathology different causations so if you look into auromet there is destruction in allium sepa you know there is catara too much catara produced anosmia in sticta there is dryness and there is atrophic rhinitis and there is obstructed here at the root of the nose so the sticta patient will have anosmia because of that whereas in sanguinaria nitrica there is nasal polyp or turbinate hypertrophy many times increase uh, size of the turbinate is wrongly diagnosed as nasal polyp so that is different turbinate everyone is having turbinate but once it is swollen that will obstruct so the smell may, may not reach the uh, olfactory nerve that's why sanguinaria nitrica and in arnica there is history of injury that has produced either nerve damage or damage to the nasal bridge that has obstructed the entry uh, entry of the particles that will stimulate the olfactory nerve center and silicia also there is chronic catara uh, just like allium sepa allium sepa has got that acute catara that remains allergic problem whereas silicia has got chronic catara and that produces uh, damage the mucous membrane okay next so in throat secondary infection eustachian catara with coated tongue calimur must be considered many times eustachian catara patient will be presented as doctor i have pain here they may say i have ear problem they will say that i can hear some sound or they may come with blocked ear doctor my block is obstructed i cannot hear or such feelings they come and when we examine we can see ear is normal tympanum is normal there is not even wax and when we look at the tongue we can see some signs of inflammation that might have passed through the eustachian tube and eustachian tube is highly inflamed with mucus that blocks so that the pressure between two sides of the tympanum are not equal so that's why they will have obstructed feeling or they may hear some sound think of calimur in under such conditions and uh, under in calimur there is coated tongue that is characteristic milky coated tongue of course for eustachian catara uh, we have a few more remedies like merk dulcis merk dulcis is useful in eustachian, uh, eustachian catara and of course uh, heparsalf all these remedies can be considered but keep in the mind cali muriaticum now throat infection goes out of control this we often encounter in our day to day practice suppose a person comes with uh, throat pain we give belladonna or hepar or phytolacta as per the indication but no result infection continues then we can think of two remedies it often uh, when an infection goes out of control we can always think of no sorts what i feel is no sort is a group of remedies that has saved homeopaths from medico legal cases that's what i feel because when fever goes out of control we think of tuberculinum we think of uh, aware we think of uh, 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 remedies like that streptococcinum like that pyrogen all these no sorts we think of so when infection goes out of control so in throat infection you can think of either streptococcin and diphtherinum so easy to differentiate is streptococcin has got uh, signs of infection by a streptococcal bacteria so it will be red and inflamed whereas diphtherinum has got white coating need not be diphtheria but there will be some similarity in pathology level there may be coating at the affected site so we can e easily differentiate streptococcin from diphtherinum next So tonsillolith. What I have shown is an image of tonsillolith. You know, those who have bad breath, majority of them have this problem. But unfortunately, they directly go to dentist. The dentist will will not agree that tonsillolith is the problem uh, is the reason. So they keep on cleaning the teeth. But the problem lies in the tonsil. 
tonsil is producing that offensive fluid that produces bad breath and occasionally there will be formation of tonsilloliths it is tonsil stone also called it's mainly made up of uh, debris tissues mucus and all and food particles also join so this is very offensive highly offensive when you break a uh, tonsillos <coughs> tonsillolith it will produce bad smell so <coughs> we homeopaths can remove it with the help a uh, help of an artery force even patient can easily hack it out but if it is not if it does not come out easily we can use artery forceps just press on top gently it will come out of course patient may gag but it one or two attempts it will come out and allen has written under allen skin out in uh, under sorinum hawking of pea like balls of disgusting taste and carrion like odor see this is he has never mentioned it is tonsillolith but hawking of pea like balls of disgusting taste and carrion like odor so it's just an interpretation but sorinum i have tried sorinum in those who have recurrence of tonsillolith and found very useful so sorinum a few doses next so in our materia medica books we have many indications written in different language even though they have not used the modern language but it works yesterday i was i had written a post on that uh, hanuman has mentioned there are different natures of uh, epidemics one epidemic may be different from the other but now modern medicine say there are different strains of viruses that will produce different types of infection so hanuman's words and modern medical word their words they are almost same even though they don't agree hanuman is a uh, real doctor they are not ready to agree even though they follow whatever the things written by hanuman in the organon hats off to the great master okay now surgery under surgery post surgical pain we have staphysagria so after incision that produces pain we can think of uh, staphysagria of course we have raphanus that is post surgical uh, flatulence we have china we have hypericum hypericum should be considered whenever there is a, a incision on the most sensitive part for example when a person go for circumcision you can give hypericum or and whenever there is injury to the fingertip that produces pain we can think of uh, hypericum but in general post surgical pain staphysagria is the remedy and i remember a case of uh, uh, endometriosis scar endometriosis i just took the case uh, there was there were symptoms of sepia i repeatedly gave one after the other potencies but there was no result so finally if the patient i was little afraid uh, that patient may leave me so i was thinking how the problem started so patient had a scissor in session after that scar endometriosis started so it is a surgery so staphy was given and wonderful result i got from uh, in that case uh, post surgical uh, sorry uh, endometriosis scar endometriosis next is adhesions after operation we have theosinaminum and calcarea flu you know we have an infertility uh, infertility infertility clinic in our department uh, that they uh, that has got good result with this remedy that is adhesions after operation or in endometriosis there will be adhesion of the fallopian tubes that leads to infertility so for that case theosinaminum is a wonderful remedy that can be used uh, in potencies so calcarea flu is also the uh, because there is fibrous tissue that pathology is covered by calcarea flu even any tumor if there is fibrosis we can think of calcarea flu like hemangioma and all calcarea flu is very useful so think of uh, these two remedies whenever there is adhesions after operation you know surgeons they just remove the adhesion if there is intestinal obstruction or fallopian tube uh, obstruction but the surgeon will say um, recurrence cannot be prevented with our knife we can only remove the obstruction so this is the situation where a surgeon and a homeopath can work together so we must keep away all those personal ego and work together and help our surgeon so that the patient will never get another attack next yeah this is a case of phimosis you know phimosis many times uh they directly go for circumcision but what i do is suppose a, a 
the child who has brought who is having phimosis if they need religious circumcision on religious ground many people do so if they prefer that then i refer for circumcision otherwise if they don't have religious circumcision i feel why to refer for a surgery that is not needed for them so what i give is acid nitric you know it is a mucocutaneous junction the tip of the prepuce so there is constriction that's why there is a phimosis so we can think of this remedy acid nitric 200 you can give and wait for a few days or weeks and if there is little improvement the mother will and uh, mother will come and say that the child is passing urine normally so no need to refer even after repeating the remedy if there is no change we can refer because phimosis can become parasphimosis which is very dangerous they may forcefully retract the skin and suddenly it may come tighter around the glands penis and that may lead to uh, gangrene even gangrene of the glands penis if uh, the blood supply is obstructed so that is very dangerous so you can refer okay next so pain and fullness in varicose vein aggravated by hanging the foot this is characteristic of vipara so there will be a bursting pain of uh, uh, while hanging the foot so we can think of in varicose vein even in other problems if there is ha uh, hanging the foot aggravation we can think of vipara now next is appendicitis you know appendicitis is considered as a purely surgical disease by modern medical doctors but what i feel is from my little experience appendicitis is not a surgical disease only gangrenous appendicitis toxic appendicitis is purely surgical otherwise we can manage with our remedy even not only chronic or subacute even acute appendicitis with pain uh, we have to look at the case but the most important point when you manage an acute appendicitis is ask the patient to stop food intake he can take only water coconut water or gruel water or lemon juice or something like that without any solid only water that will give hydration and that will give sodium potassium and all the and sugar so uh, the basic things are supplied that's enough don't give any food when you suspect uh appendicitis and ask the patient to take rest because patient moving here and there that will irritate the appendix by chance it may rupture and i am not afraid of uh, rupture of appendicitis immediately when the um, trouble starts it won't so we ha we can ask the patient still we can ask the patient to take rest take only water coconut water or gruel water or uh, lemon juice and uh, take the rest and monitor pulse and wbc daily that is very important suppose today wbc is 16000 and tomorrow it is 20 then we can think of uh, referring for uh, surgery but when you give the correct indicator remedy homeopathic remedy wbc will come down and pulse will become low and the tongue tongue is very important look at the tongue the tongue will tell that whether the remedy is acting or not and patients vitality will be better energy levels are better and many times clinically we have to diagnose appendicitis because sonologists will write down that appendix not visible or they may even write a legal disclaimer at the bottom that appendicitis may not be always diagnosed using ultrasound scanning so mri will have to be done or at least ct scan will have to be done for such cases but these are the commonly indicated remedy belladonna Aristanax, Echinacea. So Belladonna has got the sudden onset, Bryonia has got the gradual onset. And Belladonna has got jar aggravation, but Bryonia has got even slight movement aggravation. And Bryonia has got the tongue, cotted tongue, thirst, and all those things. If you don't have any indications except pain at the McBurney's point and fever and all, you can think of Iris Tanax. Iris Tanax is a specific remedy for uh, appendicitis. So many times when I don't get any indication, only appendicitis, then I give this. And along with that, you can give Echinacea mother tinger as a preventive. You know, yesterday only Dr. Abraham Vaidyan, he has shared his information on Facebook that even in snake bite cases, he give Echinacea tinger five drops four times a day. Any snake bite case. Of course, we can refer the case for antivenom treatment and all, but this will, sub this will support the patient, Echinacea mother tinger. So uh, we can consider this in uh, appendicitis as well, because by chance it structures, 
and there is local peristonitis, uh, sepsis will be prevented by echinacea. Next. So this is a suspected case of deep vein thrombosis. He had gone to a higher land, Munar, which is the coldest place here in Kerala. So he developed swelling, pain and all. So for this case, Vipera 30 was given along with Echinacea because there was an abrasion, secondary infection as well. So Echinacea really helped that case. And he had that hanging the foot aggravation. Next. Yeah, this is a patient is is a brother of a homeopath in malaysia so i did not get much detail from this patient he was admitted his operation was fixed and uh, his sister that homeopath called me and said i don't have any symptom he is almost bedridden so can you help so i had no other remedy except i risked an x30 and echinacea tincture i just suggested I was only 20 percent confident uh, confident in this case because i was i have not seen that case and uh, the remedy i am not sure about the remedy but believe me they had cancelled the surgery because there was no pain everything was better but the surgeon was not ready surgeon said that no i have to do it otherwise next week he may rupture and have problems so uh, against medical advice he was discharged and till date he is perfectly all right next so acute appendicitis is a purely a homeopathic case, not a surgical case. Except gangrenous appendicitis, there will be toxemia and increased WBC. Then we don't wait. We can refer the case. Otherwise, it will be. It may become even uh, septicemia and uh, death can happen. Now, next case is deep abscess on the abdominal wall. In this case, I have prescribed. Uh, sorry, the previous one. Yeah, uh, the indications were pain, sensitivity, irritability. A girl, a female, she is, and she has, she was very much irritable. So, HEPAR was given, and that helped cure that case because that much deep is was almost a big hole. Almost, I could see the fatty tissue. You can see that yellowish tint in the first image. Next. Uh, this is anguinal lymphadenitis you know there is a basic concept in surgery whenever there is abscess it has to be drained i don't agree with that so in this patient there was inguinal lymphadenitis and he was having pain and there was already pus formation was there you can just have a look at the image first image so on same indication there will be pain and sensitivity and irritability uh, there is separation so hepar 200 was given and that absorbed the lymphadenitis, inguinal lymphadenitis and patient, no drainage was done, no need for drainage at all. Next. In orthopedics, we often come across sprains. So acute sprains, the best is ruta. And when the sprain that remains for long and the swelling, the pain and all, you can think of strontium carp. Strontium car is also a remedy for post-surgical shock. So whenever we make a first aid box, we must also include strontium carb, acetic acid, uh, not only arnica and all. Along with arnica, we must give, uh, keep strontium carb. So acute sprain, Ruta is a remedy. Then arnica or restox, I got good result with Ruta. Restox comes whenever there is a uh, lifting of weight or any some type of injury because of that just sprain ruta was better than any other remedy and finger tips get crushed it is hypericum because our finger tip is the area that is rich full of sensitive nerves so it can even produce shock because sudden crushing of finger tip so hypericum can be given as a remedy and tennis elbow, you know, nowadays, not only tennis elbow, uh, tennis players, even housewives get this problem, tennis elbow, lateral epicondylitis. They may come with medial epicondylitis, this area, that is golfer's elbow, and lateral epicondylitis is tennis elbow. And we also get, nowadays, pain in the right shoulder with numbness here. So everything together, tennis elbow, frozen shoulder, and carpal tunnel syndrome. So better call this as cervical radiculopathy, because most of the these patients are having tenderness. If you press this trapezius area, when you hold the trapezius muscle, 
the upper part of the muscle the patient will complain of pain and they may even have trigger point on the back of the neck so that indicates there is some problem with the cervical so that could be usually cervical radiculopathy the nerve root compression that produces all these problems so you can think of uh, cervical radiculopathy so all these cases you can think of ruta restox phytolaca and arnica you know tennis elbow is enthesitis where a muscular tendon enter uh, attached to the periosteum that gets irritated so it is enthesitis so you can think of ruta restox phytolaca arnica and of course restox has got typical modality of restox and restox has got history of lifting weight that is very characteristic after and phytolaca has got the injury but the differentiating point is phytolaca is a hot patient and restox and the other ruta are chilly patient and of course arnica is also a remedy repeated injury to the joint even doing a heavy work is repeated injury so muscle tissue damage can happen so small fibers of the muscle may tear so that that's why arnica is also indicated and there will be bruised feeling of arnica now ganglion ganglion two remedies bends and ruta acid bends has got the offensive urination and ruta has got a history of injury so these two remedies often help in treating ganglion next I have cured more than 150 cases of tennis elbow and commonly indicated remedy ruta arnica restox and phytolaca and these are the situation where normally modern medicine what they do they give prednisolone injection even after there is no result they give uh, they do surgery or there are tennis elbow uh, instruments are there they just use it physiotherapy is there but with physiotherapy homeopathic medicines work better you know my friend in physiotherapy he told me that uh, modif disease modification drugs, the pathological changes in tissues can be modified better by homeopathy because he has experienced patients, orthopedic case patients under homeopathy. He has observed that uh, homeopathic patients are improving compared to the modern medical patients. He, I just asked them, can you write, give a write up? But he was little afraid because he's working in government sector. And just imagine a physiotherapist in government sector give a report that homeopathy is better uh, he will be thrown out of the departments that's why he is not ready to even disclose the name but he said physiotherapy together with homeopathy really work wonderfully so those homeopaths who are interested in orthopedics can also keep a physiotherapist who is uh, who can do auxiliary way of physiotherapy exercises that will uh, help the uh, treatment easy and better and useful as well next so ganglion action of acid as it bends in the ganglion cases and in both these cases concomitant was offensive urination and recurrent infection that's the and ganglion is not a surgical case if you use homeopathic medicines otherwise most of the cases go for surgery next Yeah, Ruta curing Achilles bursitis. You know that bursa area is swollen and tender and Ruta was given for Achilles bursitis. We have different bursitis, prepetalar, suprapetalar, infrapetalar, Achilles, olacronon. All these cases when the indicated remedy is not helping, you can think of Ruta. Next. Yeah, nausea and vomiting with clean tongue. And not see are not relieved by vomiting that is epicap just have a look clean tongue is a characteristic of epicap so you know there are homeopaths who prescribe only by looking at the tongue that is wrong but tongue can be used as a clear concomitant that can be together that can be considered for confirming the remedy so when i am getting confused between epicac and endium tart or bryonia i just look at the tongue or natural mood so there are many remedies that can be used uh, you can just google tongue in clinical and remedial diagnosis my article is there on the uh, on google you will get tongue in clinical and remedial diagnosis uh, so with some pics that is useful for practice 
So clean tongue is a characteristic of Ipecac and the nausea still remains even after vomiting. Whereas in Nexomica, vomiting gives relief and patient is happy to vomit. Next. Yeah. Uh, you know, sensitive to fish smell, especially when you come to Goa and Kerala, uh, you need a clam like this, provided you don't eat fish. If you eat fish, no need for that. Okay. So, sensitive to the smell of fish is a characteristic of three remedies cover it, colchicum, arsenical, and sepia. So, the first, first running remedy is colchicum. And colchicum has got uh, the gout in background. And nexomica has got ailments from putrid food, meat, and all, spoiled food. Uh, sepia has got the changeability and severe constipation. So the sepia picture will be there. So you have to differentiate, but consider these remedies whenever there is sensitivity to the smell of food, especially uh, pre 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 uh, cooking of uh, fish. That's very characteristic, colchicum. And colchicum is also a gout remedy. Whenever there is a bowl of great toe pain, uh, painful due to gout, along with uh, uh, ruta and all, you can consider colchicum as well, and bends, as, well, as it bends too. Next. Respiratory obstructive sleep apnea. You know, you might have seen people having getting uh, obstruction at night, sleeping obstructed at night because of snoring. So those who have snoring habit, they may get obstructive sleep apnea because they suddenly get up from the sleep due to obstruction. And this is very dangerous because if you get it repeatedly, there is chance for heart attack, there is chance for stroke. So obstructive sleep apnea must be managed. And we have a homeopathic medicine most useful is Lacasis. Of course, cactus can also be considered, but lacasis is more useful. Lacasis in potency. And this mother tinger is really helpful. Laurosaracis. I have tried it this uh, in many patients. Just give a few drops of Laurosaracis before bedtime in warm water. That will relieve, uh, give relief to the uh, obstructive sleep apnea. Of course, we have to send the patient for sleep study. Uh, we need to diagnose it. They will monitor it, give a report. And after treatment, we can ask them to do repeat the study if we need it, if we if it is needed. Uh, of course, consider these two remedies, Lauros Harasis 2. Now, asthma aggravation by watery fruits and vegetables, natrum salts and arsenical. Especially during the Ramadan season, people take watery fruits a lot. Since morning and e to evening, they don't eat. And suddenly they have watery fruits and they may get this. So natrum sulf and arsenic cal, these are repeatedly verified. So natrum sulf is more important than arsenic cal. In arsenic cal, there may be spoiled uh, fruits that can also produce or impure water, just like gingiber, arsenic. These are the two remedies for impure water, ailments from impure water. So gingiber and arsenic must be kept in our first aid box, especially when we travel outside. And natrum salve, you know, natrum salve, what is written in Materia Medica is the natrum salve patient cannot even tolerate the uh, plants growing near watery surface. And those who live in a watery area, they often suffer from respiratory problems. So again, natrum salve is indicated. So recurrent chest infection in children due to poor resistance. We have two remedy, aware and tuberculinum. Both are no source. Aware is prepared from also called as tuberculinum avis. It is prepared from a tuberculosis of the pigeon, pigeon's chest. And tuberculinum, we know that is very popular remedy. So these two remedies can be considered when the fever goes out of control. You don't get any result with the indicated remedy. You give one or two doses of the nosot that will give some relief. Later on, you can take the case again and accordingly you can do. Next. Yeah, just have a look at the lumps of sputum expelled from uh, expels with cough. We have badiaga, we have chelidonium, calicap, argenta nitricum, calimu, and mesaria. But the most useful remedy is badiaga. I have experience. I was taking the case of a difficult case. There was no relief. Suddenly, patient had a episode of cough, and the sputum was expelled, and that fell on my case paper. Patient was apologizing for doing it. But I was really happy because I could prescribe Badiaga. So many times it happens in our day-to-day -day practice. Next, 
So don't forget body yoga. Remedy prepared from fresh water spoons. Yeah, this is a postural drainage. This must be done in COPD cases. When you manage COPD, postural drainage is very useful. Because every day if we do postural drainage, they will be happy throughout the day. Because whatever the sputum is collected, that will be drained out. So we can keep the patient in this posture and keep on patting the back towards the neck. So the sputum will gradually move because their expectoration process is not active because the uh, villi are damaged almost. So we have to keep them in this posture so that within a few minutes or half within 10 minutes, they will get a full mouth full of expectorant. And we can combine this with homeopathy, that is balsam peru mother danger. Balsam peru is a wonderful expectorant. Even after you get cough and fever and all, when the expectoration is too much thick, it's very difficult to expectorate. You can give balsam peru mother tinja that has got a mucolytic property. So what I have I do in such cases is give balsam peru tinja a few drops and ask the patient to do postural drainage after one hour, one or two hours after that. So expectoration will be easy and that will give some relief to the patient. Of course, it will never cure. But giving relief to a COPD patient who is aged, having difficulty in talking and all, this is great help what we homeopathy can do. Next. I think the slide became No, the previous one, previous one, which one? Ah, gynecodops. Okay. Amenorrhea. We often get amenorrhea patients in our day to day practice, and most of them are having PCOD, especially those who stay in the hostels and those who have chicken and junk food. Many of them get. And PCOD patients. Many times we used to diagnose just by looking at the patient. A fatty girl comes with hair growth and who has got uh, acanthosis and agricans. We can easily make out it's a PCOD case. But nowadays we get even slim girls having no other signs like hirsutism, no obesity, no pigmentation, no acne. Still they come with PCOD. So PCOD patients, of course, we need to manage the case with constitutional. Specific remedies will never help in PCOD. But amenorrhea is a big trouble for them. If they don't get menstrual cycles, at least once in three or six, four months, they will be very much depressed because it is called the cry of the uterus. It relaxes them. So if they don't get it, they start suffer a lot. So when they come, they will request, give me something so that at least I will get one period once in three or four months. That's OK, but I need to get one. So under such situations, we can make use of Senecia aureus mother tinja. 10 drops four times if you give, periods will come. I have experience, of course, not in all cases, but majority of cases. And gocepium tinja is also indicated. And pulsatilla as well, impotencies. So but the most important remedy is Senecia aureus. Now, blocked tubes, fallopian tubes, scurinum and theosinaminum. These two remedies you can consider obstruction in the fallopian tubes and cracked nipples you know cracked nipple is a big problem for the delivered mothers because the cracks will become painful the child won't be able to feed uh, take the breast thing is not possible and more than that there is chance for breast abscess because whenever there is no drainage it will produce mastitis or even abscess so cracked nipple is a big problem in modern medicine, normally they give some ointments which may not always help. So gynecologists, they keep on changing the ointments one after the other, but no result. So such cases will come to us asking some kind of help. So we have graphitis, we have lycopodium, we have silicia, we have phytolacta. We have another remedy that is castor EQ. Castor EQ 30, a few doses, you can try it. A majority of the cases will give some response to the crack the nipple using this castor eq 
Next. Now, urology, you know, catheter induced fever we come across. So I remember one of my relatives who was bedridden for many years. His children all are modern medical doctors. So they prescribed him uh, antibiotics one after the other. And finally, he developed uh, oral uh, crush and all because of the continuous use of antibiotics and gastritis, vomiting. Because the urine infection was not controlled. So they had to give one after the other the antibiotics. No result. Because there was already a catheter. So they asked me what can be done. So I had given Uaur C mother tinger, 10 drops four, four times a day. Believe me, friends, that really helped. He survived for another a few years, but till date, he was he never had any urinary infection and burning and all. So Uva Ursi Mother Tinja. That will prevent infection in catheterized patients. So we can make use of that. Is why I feel homeopaths must every hospital must have one or two homeopaths who can help. In places like Mumbai, there are homeopaths who are allowed to join as clinicians. But unfortunately, in places like Kerala, uh, here modern medicine and uh, homeopaths are almost like uh, uh, two countries having enemies, almost like that. I don't mention the name of countries. OK, OK. So uh, so we have to make use of UA Ursi in our practice. OK, now to reduce serum creatinine, Acid picric 6C. I already told in the beginning. Acid picric 6C as a specific remedy. You can give two doses in a day and see the changes in the uh, creatinine levels. That will help. Next. Yeah, this is renal calculate 1.5 centimeter calculate. This is the largest one I I could expel using homeopathic medicine. And the remedy was Lycoporium 200 and Sarsaparla Mother Tinger. It's a right sided renal calculate. These are all patients from Gulf. You know, in Gulf, what they do is they keep on eating pista, badam, and all, and milk products, and non vegetarian food, Pepsi and Coca Cola. So they become psychotic, and all the renal problems they get in gout as well. Next. Next. Yeah, renal calculate left sided, nexomica and Burberry's vulgaris, mother tinger given. You know, nexomica mainly is for left sided renal calculate, and it is there is frequent urge, frequent urge to pass. Whereas in lycoporium, there is flatulence, flatulence, fullness, and all. But nexomica has got urging, urging to pass. Next. These are some of my old cases. Normally, uh, nowadays, I stopped giving the mother tinger for renal calculate because I am confident enough to prescribe with potencies only renal calculate. It's very easy. We have to dissolve the water. Water doses are better than giving pills. That is better. Now, dermatology, you know, hemangioma. Hemangioma usually comes appears on the face, but I have a case of hemangioma of the tongue. That means huge hemangioma now undergoing treatment. Like that, hemangioma can be anywhere. Even in the liver, there is chance for hemangioma. Even in the brain, that is very dangerous. So, hemangioma sometimes produce huge swelling that will be a lifelong problem for the patient and his family members. So, we can think of a few remedies. Calcarea fluor, abrotanum, and acid nitric. Calcarea fluor, any type of hemangioma you can prescribe. Preferably the 6x potency. And abrotinum for the congenital hemangiomas. Uh, children is brought with hemangioma. You can think of abrotinum. And acid nitric has got bleeding tendency. Or any hemangioma that easily bleeds on touch. You can think of acid nitric. Now cones. You know cones are very painful. Sometimes may not be painful. Anyway, you can start the treatment with andim root. Of course, if you don't get result with the indicator remedy. And if crude can be given a few doses, uh, if the painful cons come, if it's too much painful, then you better start with hypericum. Once you get hypericum, the pain will be reduced. Pain will stop. Then you can continue the case with andimonium crude. And afterwards, you can give suja, either 200 or 1M, a few doses as an intercurrent remedy. That will easily remove that tendency. So usually andim crude really helps. And have seen 
uh, those who have obesity you know obesity remedy and in crude is also a remedy for obesity not only capsicum graphitis and calcareca and those who have obesity they may get corn so again one more indication we have to prescribe antimurinum crude now dermatitis after mosquito bite you know when you come to kerala or when you go to africa to some places like that you need to keep this remedy caladium because um, due to repeated mosquito bite when the mosquito bites it will inject antihistamine into the skin so that sorry anticoagulant into the skin that will prevent clotting so that the mosquito can suck the blood easily so this will irritate the skin and produce eruptions it may even become pyoderma if we don't control it and especially those who have itch scratch syndrome you know nowadays uh, we have lockdown so we get more itch scratch syndrome cases mainly because there are uh, people don't have any work so they simply sit at home they keep on scratching scratching and if one family member scratch other will get it so that tendency continues and it becomes itch scratch syndrome so we have many medicines like sulfur anacardium graphitis all those remedies we have streptococcin as well because when there is itching and infection together we can think of streptococcin of course keep this remedy in your mind number dermatitis after mosquito bite it is caladium next impetigo goes out of control you know children often get when they are taken to the schools the classmates may have this and they will spread the infection and it is contagious and they get impetigo water using there may be bullous impetigo or it may become deep in impetigo also called as ectima all these conditions of course if there are indications of like remedies like heparsal secuta uh, we can give it but if no indications but the condition is getting worse and worse you can think of streptococcin 200 a few doses one or two doses just give it will be okay you need not give any other remedy of course you have to ask the patient to use uh, baby soap and wash the skin so that the dead tissues debris will be removed otherwise if the debris remain as a scab it will nourish the other bacteria further bacterial growth and that will complicate so it must be cleaned preferably you can use salt water with warm water little warm water put little salt and take the help of a cotton and just keep it within a few minutes you can remove the scab easily without producing much pain and you can give streptococcin 200 a few doses now post herpetic neuralgia two remedies most important remedies mesarium and ranunculus bulb of course there is uh, arsenic alb there is cyclcor and there is dalcamara but these two remedies you should never forget mesarium and ranunculus bulb you know a uh, post herpetic neuralgia sometimes can be a lifelong suffering i have seen i remember a patient who had post herpetic neuralgia in the chest he never he could never wear a dress because of this pain and he was almost holding his hand around his body so that uh, uh, he could prevent others touching him that much horrible situation he has and he was responding wonderfully to mesarium Uh, so start uh, starting i gave a uh, ranunculus bulb since it is chest but there was no result but mesarium was real helpful really helpful in that case next yeah this is impetigo case uh, for this case streptococcin one dose was given normally such cases become thick scab and even secondary infection so with one dose he was okay next yeah this is abrotenum hemangioma in a child having hemangioma huge hemangioma abrotenum 200 one dose every 7 days also given two job 1m as intercurrent and is completely cured next yeah this case actually this uh, during our diwali time we got this case uh, she had used some fire crackers and it got burst while holding the a uh, cracker in the hand and that got infected and she had visited many doctors there was no healing at all so uh, she took many antibiotics no, there was no response at all even she visited some other homeopaths no result even calendula echinacea all ointments she, she was using no result 
so finally i thought how it started it started with a firecracker so gunpowder was given 30 potency and that really gave wonderful result next yeah of course there are many what's remedies in homeopathy tuja causticum ruta dalcamera natrum mur staphysagria these are the most commonly used i will repeat tuja causticum staphysagria nitric acid uh, dalcamera natrum mur and ruta and one more is there ferrum magnetica a remedy prepared from magnet so there are many remedies but most commonly helpful remedy is tuja so tuja often helps when other remedies don't work you can just give a few doses of tuja and preferably 1m next yeah this is common cured after uh, antimonium crude up next cones can be anywhere not only the foot even the fingertip anywhere where repeatedly pressing uh, force is applied that area becomes hard and uh, it develops cones just like callosity next cones cured after endium crude another case next yeah ingrown toenail this is a real problem for many people uh, they often go for surgical removal of the nail because the nail is growing towards and it hurts it makes a wound and keep on bleeding and infection is more popular so we have many medicines the first one is magnetis polus australis felicia and acidnite these three remedies are uh, four remedies are more important acid nitric has got the splinter like pain and bleeding on touch and silicia has got abscess in toenails uh, and magnetis polus australis this is a specific remedy for this case i had given magnetis polus australis 30 potency and it is really helpful next pediatrics colic in children amelioration by pressing abdomen that is colocynth i remember I got a colocynth case when I started my practice. A child was brought to me having colic. So I asked the mother to keep the child on the table. I just kept my hands on the belly just to palpate. The child stopped crying. So that is a strong indication of colocynth. Just pressing amelioration. Bending double in male adults may bend. Children may not easily do that. And bending backward is dull, uh, sorry, uh, dioscoria. Bending backward amelioration. But bending forward is closing and pressing abdomen so that the child will stop crying the moment we palpate the abdomen. That's why uh, children, we must examine while on the uh, table so that we get exact picture. Now, umbilical pain with worms in children, spigelia. You know, children complaining of worms, maybe any type of worm, they often come present with umbilical pain. Boric has very clearly given and uh, this has helped me make in many times, Pygelia, umbilical pain in children with worm troubles, Pygelia. And child active with diarrhea, acid force, you know, normally child, acid force patient is very weak, he, is, he gets exhausted very easily. But in diarrhea, it is characteristic that is child will be happily moving here and there. So uh, acid force. Um, is very useful remedy for child active with diarrhea. Next. Yeah, this is a Piles child, three-year-old child actually. <clears throat> and for this case, muriatic acid 30 was given because very much sensitive. The mother said that even I could not uh, clean the uh, anal area after defecation because child was very sensitive. You know, in material medical, it is written that even toilet paper is sensitive to touch that much uh, muriatic acid. So for this case, muriatic acid was given and that really helped. Next. Next. Yeah, in general medicine, usually well before the sickness, that is sorinum. We never get this indication from the patient, but the mother will come and tell that. Doctor, my son, whenever he is going to get sickness, he will be very happy very energetic and he will have um, 
craving for food he will be eating like a dog can i hunger so the moment he is very active energetic i can easily make out that he is going to suffer this is characteristic of sorena please don't forget now next is febrile convulsions you know uh we never fail treating fever but many times those who have febrile convulsions normally the parents won't wait further if we don't reduce the temperature in one or two days they will immediately take or even hours they immediately take for the pediatric consultation and they start giving sodium valproate and all as a routine remedy as a preventive to uh, convulsions so when we have two remedies why don't we conserve we have belladonna and cicuta two remedy of course we have stramonium too and cuprum we have many remedies but these are the two most important remedy belladonna and cicuta febrile convulsions and the indication is belladonna has got that sudden onset that redness that fiery appearance with sometimes with delirium and convulsions you can think of belladonna whereas in cicuta there is temperature may not be that much high like uh, belladonna but there is repeated convulsions one after the other and violent distortion of the face so we and there may be some uh, pica you know the children those who eat undigested food particles so sina cicuta and acid nitric these are the most commonly used remedy for that habit of had so they may have even worm troubles they may have so we can think of cicuta so when you get a child of uh, febrile convulsions a child is brought he is having fever so you give the indicated remedy and child may get convulsions so you can in advance give a few doses of either belladonna or cicuta and ask the parents if the symptoms you may suspect the if you suspect some convulsions you can give that in uh, advance so that there won't be any convulsion this is better option than other than giving sodium valproate and all those habit forming drug substances now septic condition with pyrexia that is pyrogen you know anywhere in the body if there is infection with fever and the fever goes out of proportion temperature goes out of proportion and palpitation will be there so you can think of this remedy pyrogen it is a nosod it may be urinary infection or septicemia or any other infection you can think of pyrogen next yeah this is a case of kukuchi fujimoto disease kfd kukuchi fujimoto disease in, let me tell you frankly i was not even heard about that disease so the, when the patient came they said that uh, my daughter is having kukuchi fujimoto disease admitted in a big hospital they are planning to start uh, steroids what to do can you do fever is still continuing and in kukuchi fujimoto disease what is seen is high temperature with swollen lymph node there will be enlargement of one lymph node and there will be necrosis of that lymph node so many times they will have to remove it surgically so they asked me what to do so i said let uh, you just come let me see the case and there was no indications because already antibiotics all the medicines and they were about to start fever, uh, steroids that's why they were little afraid so i did not have any head and tail to prescribe so tuberculin was given that cured the case in 3 days no pain and even that swelling because the lymph node swelling even that disappeared next yeah this is effective way to give homeopathic medicine in cardio respiratory emergencies you know we have ambu bag it may be available for paying 2000 to 3000 rupees in all surgical shops so we can keep it with us whenever we manage any emergency case maybe an emergency home visit so you can we can take it ambu bag you can just instill a few uh, the indicator remedy we can keep a few remedies like carbovich opium and in tart arnica spigelia lactrodactus cactus nexomica china tarantula asnical these medicines can be kept in our uh, emergency medical kept, kit so that may usually helpful for a terminally ill patient or a cardiac patient so using this you can instill whatever the indicated remedy is there that can be instilled in that uh, uh, mask just put one or two drops and you give uh, you compress it so that you will get uh, the medicine power will reaches the lung and that will affect 
that will uh, help the patient to survive. So inhalation is already a method of administration of remedy as per Hanneman. So we can use this advanced machine together with homeopathy. And it is very easy to differentiate a remedy in a bedridden patient. You just touch it. If the sweat is cold, you can think of carbovage. If the sweat is hot, you can think of opium. And if there is rattling too much with coated tongue, you can think of andium tart. And he won't even allow you to touch an andium tart patient. Similarly, arnica. Arnica has got that putrid discharges, putridity, and fear of touch will be there. So similarly, spigelia has got severe chest pain, that uh, pain at the apex beat. Lactrodactus has got a cramp pain like uh, of uh, angina pectoris and cactus has got that constricted feeling and cactus patient always love to take medicine. There is craving for large quantity of medicine. That is the only one rubric given under cactus. So cactus is useful under such cases and Nexomica he has already taken many medicines and vomiting is there, indigestion is there. So the patient is suffering a lot. We can think of Nexomica. So China has got the history of uh, some surgery or there may be some drainage of vital fluid, vomiting, and there is anemia and there is distension of the abdomen because of bedridden status. So China may be indicated. Similarly, Tarandula cubensis, which is a remedy to remove the pains of death. If you feel he is having pain and he's going to die, you can think of Tarandula cubensis. That will be, that will make a calm, full, a painless death. That is very important. And of course, arsenical. Arsenical, most of the cases, I, I, I think it is Clark told that if a bedridden patient, a terminally ill patient is having arsenical symptoms, the prognosis is bad because he's going to die. So we can think of arsenical that will give some relief before his death. That's the thing. So next. So I feel I suggest all of you to have an ambu bag. Even it will help uh, before giving CPR. Because when we have a, a, a ambu bag, CPR will be very easy. We need not directly touch the lip. So together with that, we can combine homeopathic administration of medicine using the ambu bag and CPR. So when nothing works, clinical tip work. Next. So this is in clinical tips is only a help. This is nothing final because we just help the patient to come out of the painful situation. And once that situation is over, we can um, give the constitutional or uh, deep acting remedy. That is the ultimate aim of a homeopath. So clinical tips is only a help, which is not uh, universally applicable. So it depends. Let the case only decide the approach. Let the case only decide the remedy. Let the case only decide the reputation and potency and case management. That's what I feel. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mohammad uh, Rafiq. Uh, yeah. Very extensive, a very extensive webinar. It's so much of information. And yeah. I think it's going to take uh, many viewings yeah. of this particular video to absorb everything that you've given, shared with us today. Sure. Um, yeah. All the participants, if so you have you anything for the to ask. Listening. All my friends, I know. Yeah, now I have to go and break my fasting. Ramadan, it is a little bit tired. <laughs> right, right, right. If you have anything to ask yeah. uh, Dr. Mohammad yeah. Rafi, okay. can so, you just type it, give him five minutes. So if you have anything to ask. Yeah, yeah, sure. sure. I will wait. Yeah. This um, easy questions. Doc if Dr. Mani asked. Come, I will hand over. To yeah. Ah. Dr. Mani Drupat asked for uh, ganglion. Do you have to give internal or uh, which one? Oral or skin application? Which one? Ganglion, of course, internal. Ganglion, internal medicine. When you give mother tincture on which part? Ah, yeah, oral internal. or which one? Which for which condition? Mother tincture, oral. Yeah, with the tincture, water. Oral. In which condition? In which condition he is asking? Ganglion. And uh, specifically, root or mother tincture. Sorry. No, he was asking for ganglion. Oh, ganglion ruta is not um, tincture is not needed. You have to give the potency of ruta. Potency. potency. Yeah, potency internal doses. Yeah, tincture is not needed for ganglion. 
uh, you can give the okay. potency of rota if you do this yeah right and dr venkatesan hariram wants to know about uh, ca how do you manage pain uh, we have many pain remedies for cancer for example calcarea carb euphorbium arsenic alb and uh, and uh, asteria rubens uh, these are the most common and hypericum these are the most commonly used remedies for pains in cancer cases of course the remedy whatever the indication comes that is the remedy and apis mellifica as well apis mellifica it's also all uh, all these are pain pain remedies we can of course we must consider the symptoms of the patient but these remedies can be kept in mind uh, for managing pain and all eel serum and zinzibar potency Thanks. for reducing creatinine ah zinzibar you can consider mother tinger sorry i thought i have mentioned it zinzibar mother tinger see mother eel tinger serum? zinzibar five drops eel. eel serum potency eel serum potency, potency. Uh, maybe 30 30 yeah health serum is potent and uh, dr taslima you know, would like tamil to nadu, know there is a method there is a method in tamil nadu called ginger therapy if you google you will get ginger uh, they just boil it and apply around the body in uh, renal failure cases so one day i was reading robin morris repertory and i found gingiver is the only remedy given for uremia so i was just wondering oh this is already there in our homeopathy so and uh, gingiver is also a remedy for the renal failure so we can make use of that next uh, can acid floor be used for promoting hair growth for alopecia mainly this is indicated for alopecia areata because yeah. there has to be a syphilitic it is a, a an autoimmune disease body distracts on hair follicle so acid floor is mainly for alopecia areata for other hair falls you have to look at the case and prescribe there may be some causation for example in indian females the one of the most important cause for hair falling is traction baldness especially when you come to south india and all you can see uh, females they just put tight hair band so you can see traction alopecia continuous traction hair fall takes place so let the case only desire but in general we have a few remedies like natramur phosphorus lycopodium baryta ka arnica these are all the commonly used remedy so a youngster come with hair falling and he has got gastric disturbance and all constipation and all then you can think of lycopodium in the same way a patient comes with hair falling easily falls while combing and all uh, you can think of a remedy like natramur or phosphorus as per the case so better to consider the totality and external application uh, arnica mother tinger with coconut oil can be applied uh, if it is not needed then we can manage with the uh, uh, internal medicine that's all okay and most important think, nutrition uh, is very important. yeah right i think uh, we'll we'll have to stop now because dr mohammed yeah. uh, is very yeah, tired i need to break my fast we have so okay. many people asking but what we'll do is we'll email you all these uh, doubts no, otherwise i will and... i will wait for 5 minutes 5 more minutes okay. no no problem i'll wait okay yeah. okay i will start with uh, dr namrata saregar uh, okay which remedies can help in amenorrhea even with an irregular menses and ovulation irregularity is there irregularity of the menses ovulation is there but she has amenorrhea mm -hmm. you can think of pulsatilla first remedy of course you have to take the case a little bit so that uh, you get better clarity but you can think of pulsatilla in potency in such cases and just uh, look for the concomitant other than the genital symptoms you can look for the uh appetite thirst bowel and some mental emotional problems there may be some sepia characteristics or the, if uh, together you can give senesio or yes mother tinger as a tonic there is no doubt in that that you can give but preferably take the case little bit detail then only prescribe otherwise if no indication only irregularity is there then you can think of pulsatilla 
and Sanyeshwar Mother Teresa for sure. Yeah. Uh, another doctor, Praveen Kumar, uh, what is the remedy for CKD? I mean, increase in both urea and creatinine. Sorry. What is creatinine the remedy for, for CKD? Yeah. CKD. Oh, that I have. Yeah, yeah, understood. Um, no idea. <laughs> because okay. I'm not uh, familiar with creatinine. managing such cases. But creatinine, I know. Yeah. Right. Next. But How I will to try manage? to find out. You just uh, ask him to, uh, you just share my email with him. Let me search and. I'll do that. Him. I'll do that. Yeah. I'll do that. Okay. Is the. Uh, what is the remedy for golf elbow? Is it the same as tennis elbow? Yes. Both uh, uh, Ruta, Restox, Phytolanca, Arnica. Both can work uh, for both uh, tennis uh, elbow as well as golfer's elbow. Both remedies can be uh, tried. No, not out in that. Because indications are almost same. Even the causation is same. Because stretching of the muscle. One is medial epicondyle, another is lateral epicondyle. So our medicines work. Okay. And the last one is from Shahul Hamid. What are the remedies for a frozen shoulder with motion arrest in the left shoulder? Uh, I feel you can. So he has a frozen the shoulder on the left. Uh, frozen shoulder. Yeah. Uh, first thing frozen is, frozen shoulder. Uh, you can consider rest talks starting from 30 and gradually increase the potency. Gradually increase the potency. Uh, and one more thing, the most important, those who have frozen shoulder, never sleep like this. Many people do this mistake. They sleep like this, thinking about tomorrow, what I can do. They can think like this while lying there. Because of this, the shoulder is stretched. Even the cervical plexus is stretched. So that will irritate and that will become a maintaining cause. So stop this habit. And finally, uh, cervical uh, exercises like this exercise you can do. You just hold it tightly, relax, hold it tightly. You have to press, but never bend your neck. Then you do like this, hold it tightly, relax, hold it tightly, relax. Then with both hands, you just press head from back, relax. Keep, keep on doing for 10 times or five times. Then you do like this, compress, relax, compress, relax. And apart from that, you also do like this, hold it. You press your head downwards, but you keep the hands upward. Press the hands upward. That will help. And another thing you can do is do Thalasana. Thalasana, you stand and do Thalasana. So combine yoga together with uh, homeopathy. And I feel, what I feel is uh, left-sided it is. So you can either think of uh, rest rocks or later on you can consider Ledam Pal. Ledam is also useful. And when there is no result, you can give a Madorinum one M one dose, single dose and wait. That will help, I feel. Okay. Thank you. All right, doctor. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much uh, yeah. for sparing your time at this uh, fasting period. And uh, we hope you, we have more uh, shows with you, doctor. Yeah. Yeah. After this been... COVID. <laughs> yeah. Okay, after now, Ramadan, we'll get back to you. With that. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Thank All you right. for the patient listening. Bye. All right. Okay.